You're listening to the Devil Dog Talk Show. This show contains explicit material and is recommended for ages 18 and older for mature audiences only. But hey, it's the internet. Yo, what's up, bro? What's up, man? Let me check this out. My, my earphones on. I'm so good at hearing. Okay. What's that? I had to get my headphones on. I couldn't hear you. There we go. Yo, 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 yo. Can you hear me? Snoop Diggity Dog. Yep. Here you now. Are you on a microphone? Are you on headset or speaker or what? Uh, you're on speakerphone, but I can go get my earbuds. That'd be superior. Yeah, I'm gonna get that right now. I think last time I talked to you, you were gonna go to Mexico. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we got as far as TJ to the airport. And uh, it was like three o'clock in the morning, and uh, we were there at the uh, was it the border crossing, the TJX or whatever the fuck they call that shit. And, yeah. And uh, we get to the airport, and then we get our our tickets to it's called the border pass or whatever it's called, border cross. You know what? I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so we get those permits or passes to cross. And then we, uh, the guy goes, yeah, hey, they just canceled like all the flights, and we're like, no, no, uh. And then we look up, and then sure as shit, they canceled all the flights out of San Diego from like, from everywhere. So it's like nobody got any flights out, and uh, there was a uh, pretty much everybody was just kind of you know locked out or locked in, I should say. And so we ended up spending like four and a half hours in line trying to get new tickets. And then uh, got new tickets and then stayed at the airport um, for 15 hours just to find out that they, uh, yeah, just to find out that they uh, delayed the flight again from 530 to 10. And we just fucking left, dude. We were like, no. And so I ended up having I guess it's not the guards this time. Nah, like not at all. That was, you know, that's the thing is like, of course, my wife was upset, right? Because this is a big trip for her and. Going to visit family and everything, and so it was going to be Sorry, great. Dude. No, no earbuds. I lied. Oh, it's okay. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> we said fuck at the same time because it was genuine. Yeah. Oh man. Fuck. But yeah. So then we ended up just coming home and have like a staycation, and you know, us and the kids just had a good old time, and ended up going to see my nephew instead. So that was cool. We ended up going going playing in an arcade in Temecula. And, it's pretty fucking cool, actually. Like, it's a good consolation yeah. prize, you know what I mean? And I don't do yeah, good planes. Sure. I don't do good with planes at all. And, uh, you know, that's for, right. I remember you saying that. Yeah, I don't. And so, like, I, people go, why? And I go, well, if it's just me, you know, I can take like a muscle relaxer. I'll be cool, right? Um, when I had my service dog, Leo, before he passed, it was like super much easier because I, I just focus on him. He focuses on me, you know, take a little edible and shit, and I'm good for the flight. And well, now you're going to throw in my kids and my wife and shit. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, my God. Do we have parachutes? No. Fuck. This shit just kind of, you know, it's a tin can, right, guys? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, man. That's something that's, that's interesting. Lack of, lack of control or lack of trust, maybe. Or Oh, no. Hell yeah. Like my, all of the triggers, bro. Like all of them. It kicks in all of them. Like, uh, immediately, right? Like, one of the worst things for me is kids, right? So I love children. It's, like, one of the most beautiful things on earth. Uh, babies. My, my uh, uncle just had a baby. Fucking gorgeous little girl. And I'm so happy for them. But it's, like, the moment kids come into the picture, I something in me is innately just back to... I don't even know where. Like, I'm just not, you know, not tapped into the present. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, it's more so like 
there's this constant hyper vigilance, right? Like with me, I'm pretty open with PTSD and TBI. I know we've, we've talked about shit like that and, you know, injuries, war experiences and stuff like that. And a lot of my therapy and I call it applying therapies daily. Cause that's how we, you know, make a better self. Um, sure. So for me, it was like every, everything that triggers me is uh, it goes back to being that mama mode, right? Taking care of everybody, making sure everything's situated, you know, uh, the, ch- the socks have been changed. The water is full, you know, all that fucking good shit. Got plenty of ibuprofen, right? Whatever. Um, all of those things that we do to prepare in those, um, what do they call them? Thought exercises, so to speak, you know, running through scenarios to make sure we have all the equipment. Um, can we take care of these types of injuries? Blah, 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 blah. So that's what I mean. As soon as kids come into the picture, this weird mommy mode takes a hold of me when I'm just always like, all right, is everybody safe? You know, is this going on? Blah, blah, blah. And it's just like watching Marines or anybody, honestly, like, like when you're responsible, you know, for, for the souls that are, <laughs> are present around you. Right. It's just a trippy set mindset that I go back into. So my wife and I've been working on that. That's the reason why we were like down to take the trip. Right. And then when it got keep, kept getting pushed back and kept pushed back, you know, the uh, scenarios get worse and worse and worse. And so it gets like a, a more pessimistic spiral. And that's kind of like my own self, like breakdown of when I get weird, you know, everybody has their own you know, moments of challenge. And I go, that's, that's pretty much me. It gets to the point where I'm just assuming the worst and preparing, you know, to act on the best. And, and before I know it, I'm just kind of like not even present. My wife goes, you just, you're just staring. You're just kind of staring at things. What's going on? (coughs) Disassociation. (laughs) Yeah. Legitimate. That's a big word. (coughs) Well, I can help with that whenever you're ready. I'm always ready. And that's the reason why I loved it when you invited me, bro. I was like, man, I fucking want to. P.S. I don't really do planes. <laughs> Full circle, right? <laughs> and uh, two, it was like, God damn, it's not cheap no more, man. I thought pl- the planes were like, we need you, like people. Oh, like, yeah, dude. It's a little motherfucking, it's a little different nowadays. Like, yeah, sure, the retreat's only this much, but. The plane ticket alone is fucking that much. Yeah. No. Why don't you stop bullshit and hop in your car or fucking come out sometime? I will. That's something me and the wife have been talking about, actually. Because I showed her the cows and the horses and everything you got going on. (laughs) I showed her the boots and she's like, the fuck are those? I'm like, that's a dinosaur. (laughs) Fucking dinosaur boots, dog. Oh, man. (laughs) No, but I've, me and Tommy have been talking, too. Like, he really wants to figure out uh, Tommy Chase and uh, me and him talking a lot, you know, about the show and, you know, what he's got going on, I got going on. And they were talking about real estate. And he's like, yeah, man, I just want to find some land and fucking, you know, make shit happen. I'm like, dude, that's dope. So it's like we talk Where's about he trying to go. Honestly, I it, it it's I don't know. He, he loves where he lives so much. It's kind of tough for him. You know, and comfort's a bitch when you know everything around you. But um, he said he's open to just about anywhere that has land. And from what I can assimilate from our years of conversation, right, is land with available workspace. So if the bones are okay, and I told them about that loan, there's a fucking, there's a specific loan. I can't remember the fuck it's called, where you can actually get the the property and say there's an outhouse on it. And the, the VA is like, yeah, well, that's dope. And you go, cool. And so you break down the house to just where there's like a bulkhead or the original something, or you know, there's some details that I fuck it's beyond me. Right. But I know I'm aware of it. And so I was telling him, I was like, you can find land, you could buy like a shitty place, tear it down, rebuild it the way you want. And then you could put your fucking, you know, studio. Cause he really wants his work studio and you could put your fucking anything you want, bro. And he goes, fuck yeah. But like the last few places me and him talked about the water rights and the, the mineral rights were all weird. And uh, yeah, there's, you know, everything right now is so crazy too with percentages. It's like, well, fuck, if you're situated right now, just, you know, hold on a bit longer. <laughs> yeah, that is. But I mean, hey, we think we can hold on a little bit longer. But what if now is the time that you need to go get some motherfucking land or else it ain't coming in the future if you ain't got it? Like, yeah, so how true. much? 
how much longer do we have until that fucking happens? And that's the advice that I gave my buddy. He's like kind of in a bind, not like he's a real estate investor as well. And I told him what I was doing. I'm like, look, bro, I am li like, I pretty much liquidated my big assets and I'm, I'm all in with what I'm doing right now, you know? And like, if it works out, cool. If it doesn't, then I'll just keep doing it. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Like, well, pimp you know, the strategy, like, homie. What, what, what's the leverage here? What you got? What's for for what? The real estate. Like, what's what's your leveraging? What's your what are your what are your investments in? Like, are you trying to get? Oh. Like, where you? So where, I think right now, I mean, any direction that you can go to get land, do that. Yeah. Um, and then if you have the ability, so like, are you familiar with the term house hacking? No, I ain't never heard of that. Okay, so a uh, house hack is where you buy a property and then you either make money on it and somebody pays your mortgage or you like rent out a room or you rent it out or what it's like while you're living at your house, but you can also get passive income from it. And not really a passive is, is relative at that point, like what we're saying passive is, but for instance, with a VA loan, you walk in and you buy a duplex. Yeah. Right? And um, you fucking hop in that duplex. Let's say you get it for a blank amount of money. Your mortgage is $1,200, $1,300. And then you rent one side out for $1,000. And Dude, you don't that's tell fucking the smart as shit. You, and you don't tell the person next door that you're the owner. You're just a renter as well. So, like you know, fucking whatever, but you figure out ways to do that. Um, well, I just took it to a bigger level where, you know, I have a couple single family homes that rent. Um, I, I, I have a, a couple long-term rentals and I, and I, I have an Airbnb <clears throat> and where I've shifted is, the glamping realm where if you can get these spots that are 15, 25 minutes right outside of a city, you know, do your best to make them animal friendly, give a little bit of seclusion where somebody can come up and watch the sun go up, come down, put a little fire pit. And man, people are paying fucking money for it. That is so interesting that you said that. Because, because people, I think COVID kind of turned a lot of people on to the fact or the thought that, you know, being in the city sucks. <laughs> it fucking <laughs> you know? does, dude. Dude, yeah, like, like, and, and whether it was like a huge, like, shift in consciousness or like shift in something, but a lot of my peers are like, I want to get out of this city because it's, it's honestly like mentally, physically exhausting, not to mention like the fucking EMF and all that. Like that's a whole nother animal with living in a city, but EMF like, like what emu emus fucking, I don't know what that. E no, no. Like, um, uh, uh, let uh, you know, ask me a fun question like that. I think it's electrical magnetic frequency, maybe. Oh, like, EMF. Like, electromagnetic fields yeah yeah i got you no i've heard yeah. about that shit like people say it's like no i like, don't know you, say it's crazy like these, these 5g towers like bro we don't really know what the fuck they're doing to human beings and like you go downtown los angeles and think about like all of that fucking radiating communicating beast of fucking just can't be good for you you know like you're sitting in a building with 40 fucking computers that can talk to space at the same time you can't tell me that that doesn't have an effect on your fucking body at a cellular level you it's know what got I mean? to it's got to like yeah. I, I was watching enemy of the state last night with the uh, willie smith and gene gene hackman yeah that's who's in it and uh 
Dude, there's Shout actually out a shit. To Gene Hackman. Yeah. There's like a shit ton. He's still rolling around, I believe. It, there's like a shit ton of fucking famous actors in that movie. Um, it's crazy. And what you're talking about, like all the five G's and satellites and all this crazy shit. That's what they were talking about. Like his wife was I the know. one, Regina King, who I fucking love. Oh my but god. Back, but back then, it was like, oh, that's ridiculous future talk. Yeah. <laughs> In the, and in the storyline, it's no, we had 20 years ago shit like what we're talking about. And that was in 1990 yeah. something. So in the 70s, these fuckers were doing shit like that. I'm saying just in general, these fuckers. And then uh, like right nowadays, like I guarantee you, it's like they probably listening in right now going like, man, I like this fucking guy. He's talking like some good shit. He's funny too. <laughs> but yeah, that's the craziest shit about the future, bro. It's like we never know. You're right. We never know. Right. We just never know. We got to do what make, brings us joy and establish this peace and, you know, all that, that cope aesthetic shit. And I think it's such a, a, a rare time to live in. Like you were saying, like people are awakening and that's what I dug so much when, on our last conversation, right? We were talking about peeling back the layers, of course, the psychedelics and you know, psychedelic therapy. And that's why I felt, you know, more comfortable today saying like, yo, when I fucking spaz out, <laughs> I do, I get weird and I'm still trying to work on it. And so when you bring up medicine, and like the event you got going on, um, on Memorial Day, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's like I love those type of conversations where it gives me a better outlook, especially if I'm in the mix of mud, right? <clears throat> so if I'm going through it, and I'm like, oh man, let me just disassociate or dissocialize, disconnect a bit, and uh, see what everybody else has got going on in the world. Like give my mind a break. This is what I kind of you know, do on social media and it helps because it's like, well, fuck yeah, Jared's doing this great shit. You know, what the fuck is that about? I'm like, yeah, that'd be fucking awesome. You know, and all the cool shit, especially with the moo moos and the, and the horsies and everything else. And then of course, like with everybody else that I talk to, you know, especially on the show, but then just friends in general, just like one of those helpful things that, yeah, you know, social media could be a fucking bane to somebody's existence. Right. Uh -huh. But for me, I use it to kind of anchor, you know, anchor back into reality. Like, yeah, I'm in a funk. I'm disassociated. I'm getting weird. I'm isolating. Okay, cool. You know, let me let me tap into somebody else's world right now. You know, because my replay is not too cool. And so it's awesome. I want to talk a little bit more about what you got going on on Memorial Day, and uh, if you like, take the lead a bit on that. Yeah, man, absolutely. And um, thanks for asking. So Memorial Day. This year, we're going to do our third retreat in the Tulsa, Oklahoma area. Um, and this one will be at our um, new property. And, and this property is the property where we were able to successfully file for um, uh, a church here in Oklahoma. And, um, you know, that uh, brings and ease to, to some of the legality of the use of the sacrament itself, um, which making people feel comfortable and safe is, is kind of the cornerstone and bedrock of how we operate. And for some people, le legalities um, ties into that. So we, we look for all ways to kind of alleviate that um, angst when they come into the space, but this is a, um, seven and a half acre property that, um, has a bell tent on it and a double wide trailer that we've renovated. And, um, it's, you know, not to, you know, toot my own horn, but this is toot kind of it, my bro. life's toot it. Yeah, this is this is my life's work really coming to fruition. That's beautiful, um, dude. I had the opportunity to go to Nyko uh, in in 2016 when when the wheels really came off of me um, and my mental health. What is Nyko? Um, Nyko is a um, neurological institute for cognitive excellence, and I'm I'm fucking that up but what wow. it, what it what it is is it's a facility that i'm not even sure if it's still there but 
it, it was a facility in Bethesda, Maryland, right outside Bethesda, Walter Reed, whatever the fuck it's called now. And um, it was curtailed for like the special operations community. And it was a holistic approach to um, kind of get guys back on their feet. And what it is, it's, it's a 30 day intensive outpatient program where they do a head to toe assessment on your entire body, mind. And then they start to get into the soul aspect and you do art therapy, you do music therapy, you do yoga, you do breath work, you do meditation. And, um, I was uh, pretty much sober for that 30 days, and I thought, and I, I just thought to myself, I'm going to do this one day. I didn't know that plant medicine was going to be a part of it. However, I knew I was going to have a little property, and I knew I was going to offer, you know, art therapy and 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 yoga and breath work. Um, I didn't know what all that looked like, but I knew it was going to happen. That's fucking awesome, and, um, dude. Yeah, man. So that's what is happening. We um, we are lucky enough to have this space, um, and it's a three day retreat that I'm excited about. We have um, the container is just about full. I think I got one more spot left, and it's it's an all veteran container. So the facilitators, the participants. Um, the, the support of it, the donations, um, there it's all veteran ran and operated. That's dope as fuck. Thanks, man. It's, um, I'm proud of it. You should be because you know, like, we, like you were saying, like when your wheels were coming off the hinges, right. And you were able to go to this program, Nike, n- no, no's. No, I can't fucking remember. I'm sorry. I can, can never remember. Uh, I was about to say Rico for some goddamn reason. It's <laughs> Nico. And so, like, here you are, you know, like, years later, you know, creating that and fulfilling that vision, right? And that's something that's beautiful to me because it's really difficult. Because when, when you're in the mud, when you're in the mix of the negativity and your wheels are falling off, you don't know what direction to go to. That's what's so, like, vibing is with uh, the new age of, I would say modalities of therapy, right? And to transcend that desire, you know, coming from a Corman position or medic or, you know, medical personnel persons that are out there, you know, listening or just people in general that maybe, you know, changed career paths and found something new and want, you know, besides yoga, go a little bit deeper or spirituality, like you're saying with the church aspect. Yeah, I totally dig that because when you're fighting the darkness within, there has to have there has to be a higher energy, a higher influence, right? That that true inner self, but we perceive it to be external at times. And when you're looking inward and you're battling this darkness, right, to find a commonality of others within others and, and a community in general, right? Mm. That's just it's it makes everything whole, right? Like I go back to the Bible because that's what I grew up with, right? You know, when you praise the Lord's name yourself and you have another, then you're like in the meeting of Christ or something like that. I can't, I'm not a solid reverend, okay? <laughs> I do my best. I got the footnotes. Um, so when when I go back to that idea, you know, of, of just community, right? A oneness, fellowship, love, uh, dedication to becoming a better self, Right. When we when we took those oaths of service in the military, right? I honestly, you know, everybody knows there's those few and a lot, honestly, probably nowadays. They do it not knowing the full capacity of what that means and the depths of relationship to that oath or to that service or to that commitment, right? And to be able to transcend that service from one aspect to another while maintaining that true inner self, you know, of helping wanting to uh, elevate not just the self, but others. I just, it's so cool, you know, building, building something on, you know, land, you know, in all truth that uh, we fought for, right. That, you know, 20 years of war has created a lot of stuff, right. And, And what we got looking into the future, it doesn't look that much more better. 
and I don't know if that's how you're supposed to uh, phrase a sentence, right? But it don't look no much better, right? And yep. everything else is about to get worse. Though. It got worse. Though. Right. It did. And I was just looking at some shit about China expanding their, you know, their draft and, and re, uh, recalling retirees and fucking all this shit for experienced soldiers. I was like, yo, this is what people do right before they go to war war. Okay? <laughs> like, like this is indicative of fuckery is afoot. OK. And of course, you know, for years, people have been talking about it. But, you know, let's get ahead of it because. Right now, I think one of the coolest interviews I've seen, okay, not from a veteran, right? Yeah, it's pretty amazing, uh, was John Stewart. And he was interviewing, I think, the Assistant Secretary of State or uh, Security or some, somebody with a great paying job that, you know, couldn't even answer a question about an audit. <laughs> and I was like, word, you're just like floating around on this dude. You, you, you just, so, okay, words. Got it, semantics. That's what you're here for. And John Stewart just pressed her, bro, and pressed her. And then at the end of the day said, you know, when the rank and file are on, you know, WIC or food stamps and shit like that, you know, w there is corruption afoot, right? And I was just so like, fuck yeah about that interview. Because for years, you know, guys like us and people in the military, ladies alike, everybody that has a set of eyes, okay? And even the ones that have lost them, okay? They, they have a set of ears. And even the ones that can't hear, they've been the fuck around the fucking block. Right. And when somebody else other than us starts seeing and connecting those dots, it's like, cool. Now that you're on page, now you're on step. Let's also PS like therapies and modalities. You know, look at what my boy Jared's doing. Like, check this shit out. Right. Like, uh, what is it? The Capones. I talked to them, too. And it's like the you call it sacrament. Right. And I want to go a little bit more in depth. What does that entail? Um, the sacrament that, that we serve in ceremony is, uh, psilocybin. Nice. That is the sacrament. That is beautiful. Cause they also talk about, again, I'm going to go back to my Jesus in Gnosticism. <laughs> right. And, uh, and uh, I could probably piss off a few hundred thousand people or million with the whole Catholic church. But my point is, <laughs> my point is, is a lot of people have the conversation that the Gnostics, per, you know, practice uh, methods of elevated thinking or hiring oneself. And in Judaism, there's there's a whole book, like plethoras of books. There's it's a uh, blind, you know what, I'm not going to remember their name. But it's Madison Margolin. She wrote like a. She works on a magazine with her and her partner, and they. She's working on a book, like literally describing what I'm trying to spew out of my stupid mouth right now, and it's so amazing, you know, to tie in the spiritual aspects of treatment and therapy. So when you guys are looking to create that uh, idea of safe space, right, and encouraging one to, you know. I, I would say pour themselves into this modality of therapy, right? Because I've been through a lot of therapies, like C, all the CB, PB, TB, TBDs, and all the different procedural ones, uh, you know, all, all the cognitive behavioral stuff too. And uh. what I've noticed is without the spiritual element, I have not been able to anchor the habit to recreate the functionality that is necessary. Right. So I noticed in a lot of therapies, it's, it's, it's habit, uh, something, and then it creates psychology. So it's like consistency. So you got your habit and then you create consistency and then you have the, the outcome psychology. Right. And me and you talked about integration a lot last time. So when you're consuming the sacrament, right, are we going for a dose of like, Astro astronomicals, <laughs> Astro astronomical doses, heroic doses. That's the one, or is it, you know, at your own pace? Um, I I meet the person where they are, um, and I use my intuition with um, them and their previous experiences with um, psychedelics, their previous work with them, if any, and then. Um, the conversation that we have leads us to a number. Typically, it's between three and five for the evening ceremony, three to five grams. And um, 
if the person is comfortable and willing, I, I recommend the five. Um, because after it, so at the retreat, let me just like step back real quick. So the Saturday morning that everyone wakes up after everyone kind of meets each other and we do a, a couple you know, classes and an icebreaker type thing. Saturday morning, we wake up and we get the nervous system going immediately. And, and we drive it into that sympathetic, parasympathetic response, that, that fight, that flight, and then that rest and digest. And we do that all day. And, and what that allows is the body, the mind, and even the spirit to become wildly fatigued, <laughs> the brain. Um, people are tired. And then you can get them into a space and make them feel very comfortable. And, and, and that space that I'm describing is, is called a container, a container of individuals that know and hopefully trust each other with their spoken word and emotions. And when you give people the opportunity for that and then you ingest the sacrament and every individual is on their own little mat and or bed blindfolded with their blankets and their teddy bears and anything that they want to bring with them on their individual journey and um we have multiple people walking around and doing what we call hold space where, um, you know, we are using our intuition and our energy to kind of feel where people are. And, you know, if somebody's struggling, we give them the physical signs to display if they want to hold somebody's hand or, um, anything like that. Um, and then they come out of that experience and, uh, we all go outside and, and, you know, thank God, our creator, and we thank Mother Earth for providing the medicine um, for God through her. And, um, yeah, but to, sorry, to answer your an, initial question, um, three to five grams, and, and I, I, I really do enjoy those macro dose five gram um, ceremonies for anyone who wants to really, um, dig up and spread out some things. That is so amazing. Like my personal path, right? I've tried quite a few times <laughs> the mushrooms. Uh, I consider it the same way, right? There's a, an absolute spiritual side of it. And there's a lot of preparation, um, mental, like you're saying, everybody has to be on the same page. I know tons of people out there, you know, listeners and, people that have done mushrooms for fun. Of course, you know, everybody's, I'm not saying everybody, but right now in 2023, right? The psychedelic uh, realm is pretty popular. Okay. Whether you're doing, it, it really is. It really is the age of enlightenment again. Right. And so it's, it's such a powerful time and it's such a powerful medicine, but at the same time with the, like you were saying, the comfortability, the angst of legalities, but understanding what it is and what it's not, I think, is even more powerful, right? It's not LSD, okay? Um, I've never experienced LSD. I would be kind of interested in it, but it's more or less, you know, can you consider source, blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm the guy that likes growing my own weed because I know no matter what, I know exactly what's going in it and what's coming out of it. And I could, you know, verify all the different things, right? There's no pesticides. There's no additives. There's no fentanyl, you know, being laced with none of the crazy shit. Right. And that's something with mushrooms, I believe is being come becoming more and more, uh, more, more approachable, you know, not just for therapies and treatments, but as industry, uh, for reputable sourcing, uh, measurable, you know, data, you know, empirical data. Everybody likes empirical data. Uh, all that good shit. And so I'm, I'm just happy that you shared with us, you know, the the full page or the full look of the event, right? You're not just there, okay? You're there to do work, okay? This modality is a blessing. And the approach of spirituality, to me, I just, I love it even more. Because 
you don't have to, we don't have to all believe in the same things, right? But what I like to tell people that are on, on the edge, you know, we got listeners all around the planet, all different types of experiences, not just veterans, right? And there's all different types of traumas, okay? So uh, there's no measurable, I would say, there's no, nobody's better, worse off, okay? Everybody's experiencing the own fuck that they have in their life, okay? And if it's something of interest, right, to pursue uh, psilocybin mushrooms or therapies or communities like yours, right, where you're coming together and you're experiencing something that will, again, I, I'm, I'm backing it up given my own personal experiences, it will create the absolute experience you need. Now, I mean that so bad, so bad, okay? It's the one you need. <laughs> Full pause. Not maybe the one you want, okay? And so that's what I like about hearing, you know, about the, the, the assistance and the energy and bringing that sense of thankfulness because set setting, right, uh, uh, prep work, and like we talked about last time, uh, integration, right? Making sure that people are not just walking away from this profound experience, but there's tune-ups. Uh, me and Wiz Buckley were talking about that as well, you know, going back in and getting a tune-up and making sure, you know, hey, the higher self and you are still, you know, at the same level. Release your chakras, like we were talking about <laughs> hemorrhoids earlier today. I'm like, you know, maybe it's my lower chakra. I told my wife she started laughing. <laughs> She's laughing so hard at it. I was like, I don't know. Do, do I have to get fucked in the ass to open that fucking chakra? Oh, man. Hopefully not. It's not something I feel. Hopefully not. <laughs> Which is great. So I digress. Talk about awakening. Right. Oh man, it does. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but like getting hit in the balls is one thing. Right. But having your ass chapped at all, it just sends a different type of pain. And it really is. It makes it, it makes you looking like a turkey peeking over a wood pile. And I don't know. Have you ever heard that one? <laughs> no. Oh, do this to your kid. I do it to my kids all the time. My stepdad did this to me when I was a kid. All right. You ever, you ever see a turkey look over a wood pile? And they go, no. And you reach up behind the neck and right wherever there's a little piece of hair or a little hair on their head, you just rip it up and they go, rip! <laughs> and it looks exactly like a turkey trying to peek over a wood pile. It's so, yeah. it's so dad joke. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Oh man. But I digress. So this event that you have, going, <laughs> this event that you have going on Memorial day, can we get some more inner, inner information? There we go. That's what I was looking for. Information on how to connect, pursue more of Jared and Napier, as well as, I, mean, I don't know, figure out all this cool shit that you got going on. Yeah, man. Unfortunately, like I've, I've started a couple websites and I just don't have the bandwidth and focus to do that type of stuff right now. And, um, so you can just hit me up on Instagram mostly. I rarely go on Facebook, and and when I do, I'm re I'm immediately reminded why I don't go on Facebook, and uh, I, I think I'm heavily censored on that on that platform as as well. So Instagram um, uh, at j e r o d underscore n a p i e r just my first name underscore last name. Um, and and what I and what I do like is I've been talking to a lot of veterans and their spouses recently. So like people that are interested in this work, but they just have a million questions and their spouses have a million questions. And like if anyone is called to this type of work and whoever you're connecting with to possibly facilitate that experience, if they don't feel comfortable talking to you or to possibly like somebody who is going to support you in this journey, then possibly look elsewhere. Because to me, that is a red flag. If, if, if they can't encourage or, or not encourage, but, be willing to be a source of information and quell any kind of angst that the spouse may have 
because it's a genuine concern to send your spouse to one of these retreats and then they get broken open and fractured in a beautiful way um, with this plant medicine. And then there's like no integration support. And then now the spouse has to deal with this person and, you know, their serotonin levels doing what they do naturally and not integrating and, and kind of falling into old patterns of behavior. Like that's scary, you know? So I've been doing a lot of, um, phone conversations and, uh, zoom calls with spouses and veterans, which I really like doing that because that's where a lot of that angst comes from, from the veteran themselves is that they don't, they feel like they're sneaking around, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm like, look, and like, yeah, well, I didn't tell my wife that I'm doing that. I'm like, well, you're going to before you come here. And it seems like a necessary part, right? Well, yeah. 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 Like, because you want and need, in my opinion, full support from your support system. Because like, if like they go home and they are just through the fucking moon vibrating and they had this beautiful experience where they thought about their first time they met their wife and they gave them flowers and they like went up into the clouds together and they had children and like, and now you get home and your wife's been dealing with the kids for the three days you've been gone, Memorial Day weekend all like and you don't tell her that you're going out there for work she's gonna think that you're out there just fucking off with jared napier you know (laughs) hanging you know what i mean yeah and now like and and now she's gonna have resentment she's she's gonna have like well why are you so happy all the time now you know and that's gonna make you feel guilt shame because you lied to her fomo you know and it's like well hey like I was actually out there really trying to get to the root cause of a lot of my pain and trauma. And there's this dude that I know or met through somebody that um, he's passionate about it. And, 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 and he says that he's been helping some folks along the way and he's done this thing and he's helping people. And, and he has a church and, and, and then they ingest sacrament and the sacrament is mushrooms yeah um you know like a lot of spouses ain't trying to hear all that well no because everybody's watching fucking the fallout of waco and waco again it's like what do you mean church motherfuckers that (laughs) kool-aid right right? jim jones right that was the one the kool-aid right so it's like fuck when you say shit like this right and i'm gonna i'm gonna talk to you real up like not as a not as a talk show host real quick me and my wife talk about that shit a lot, okay? And that's immediately a fucking concern. Like, not not the whole religious aspect, but the fucking, you know, the tripping out and am I going to be safe or am I going to be okay? Am I going to be tolerable when I come back? But you know, it's one of those things that I find fucking super important to talk about. So let me put my guest, my host show back thing I'll hat on back real quick. But that's amazing, okay? Because to me, right, like you're saying, you, you have to be able to work with the support system, right? Communication is key, especially to success. Okay. Communication is key also to failure when you're not fucking communicating. And the key is to be doing that. That's how you get success. So talking to the spouse and removing those fears, right? Especially with veterans that may be, you know, feeling like they're sauntering around doing something wrong. Right. Well, how do you go about answering those questions? Right. Like as a person and then as as the you know, I'm not going to lie, the professional. Right. Them coming to you in this aspect or in this relationship. Right. How do you address? I'd, I'd probably guess the number one fear is. Are they going to lose their mind? Like, do they become something completely detached forever? Like because, you know, growing up, say no to drugs. Thank you, Miss Reagan. Anyway, um, so how does that go? How does that conversation usually go? A lot of the concern is, is what does the aftercare look like? Like, is this something that has like an, an addictive is, is, is he going to need it all the time to, 
be quote unquote happy or, you know, what does the support structure look like for my husband when he comes back? Um, that's a lot of the concern. And, and my only, it's not even an argument to me, but my, the only thing that I say when it comes to, you know, like, is your spouse currently on, you know, and like, they're both sitting there and I know they're the participants history. So I'm like, has your spouse been on antidepressants in the past? Yes. Have they worked? And then like, that's when they both start smiling. And I'm like, look, I'm not saying that that's a wrong road to go down. And then, I, and then like, I am aware that the side effects from some of these medications are intolerable to humans. Yeah. But for some, for some reason we tolerate it because a doctor told us to. And I like, dude, my stomach hurts and my, and I can't sleep with my wife. I can't passionately make love to my wife. And my stomach hurts all the time. Oh, that's a side effect. Well, guess what? Fuck you. I'm not dealing with it. Yeah. But for some reason, like, like we're like, yep, that's normal. So I, I, I paint the picture of this isn't Jared Napier's pharmacy. You know, this is something that was given to us by God through Mother Earth and then captured <laughs> and then served not altered not anything just harvested now i got a weird question for you cuz i've been watching the last of us if somebody eats these mushrooms they're going to fucking are we going to see them goddamn motherfucking bloaters and clickers and shit bro or what are you going to see what have you watched the last of us no oh my consumerism is showing. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> so there is this video game, okay, called The Last of Us. And for our listeners, I guarantee you everybody knows what the fuck I'm talking about. They always know what's up. But so The Last of Us video game came out like a long time ago. Probably, I don't remember the year, but it was on PS4. PS4 has been a lot longer since PS3, so it's probably, fuck, 2012, I think. So it's it's been it's an older game, and they came out with part two, and it really hit. And then Pedro Pascual and uh, Ramsey, I th I can't remember first. I think it's her last name is Ramsey. Uh, they starred in the HBO uh, show called uh, The Last of Us, which is fucking awesome. I don't know if you're into TV, but it's a pretty dope fucking show. And if you like the game like I do, it's a pretty cool fucking experience. So the storyline is that uh, there was this strain of fungus. Cordyceps is what they focused on in the game. I don't even think they said it in the movie. Maybe they did, but I don't remember it. I don't remember the movie as well because I just watched it. I played the video game a lot, okay? So I remember the video game more. Uh, weird brain things, right? So the cordyceps mutated in such a way that it would survive in the human body above a specific temperature because our bodies run too hot that they wouldn't survive in it beforehand. But they now have mutated due to the increase, if you want climate change, people, here you go, due to the increase of the temperature of the world. Climate change, people, there you go. And so the cordyceps mutated and infected uh, uh, the people, the populace, right, in such a weird way. And then they started becoming zombie-like. And if you know what cordyceps are, you know, probably, uh, you'll know that they infect uh, bug life or certain bugs, and then they make them fucking zombies. And then they pop out of their head and release spores to get, make more zombie thingies. So it's a really interesting fungus, right? And so throughout the game, depending on how long the person's been infected, they'll become different types of zombies, right? Like if you like, I like zombie land too. And any kind of zombie game, Ash versus evil dead, fucking you name it. So they now become like super zombie. Okay. And bloaters are like this just huge fucking tank of a zombie, like cordyceps thing. And clickers 
are these like mutated, ugly faced fucking things. It really looks like just blown out beef curtains on a vagina. And fucking, uh, they go click, click, click. And that's how they find you and fucking murder you like right away in the game. So it's a dope game. My, so that we now have built all that fucking context and background for you. Have you ever had that kind of question <laughs> on the sacrament? Whether or not, I guess not, because you would have remembered that. <laughs> like, how to be the first? Oh no, no, but they, no, but people. All I all I tell people about that is that the medicine is going to walk with you, and it's going to show you what it wants to show you. Now, if it shows you some weird shit, how do people genuinely react to that? Because I've seen, in my personal experience, I don't know how common it is, right? Um, on the macro dosing, <laughs> micro dosing, nothing. I just feel warm. I feel good. I actually feel stronger. Like I, I, my confidence is up. My fucking clear as mine, Isabel. And I noticed that when I was able to secure a source and blasey, 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 all that good stuff. My point is. Macrodosing showed some really interesting visual experiences, but I wouldn't even call them visual. It felt spiritual, and I happened to see said spiritual experience. I don't know if that makes sense. And so when somebody has a, that type of experience, say it was profound, is that common or is it uncommon? Ask that question again. So when you're taking a macro dose, right, and you have this interaction with the medication – that or sacrament that where you are visually perceiving spiritual entity or spiritual uh, visitor, right? I don't know which one, which word works here. I'm not hyped up on the uh, political spectrum of how to talk about spirits. Yeah. Okay, so if yeah. you, if you happen to engage or meet or see uh, a spiritual entity, is that common with mushrooms or is it very uncommon? Um. I think individual experiences may vary. Okay. That's a dope answer. I can get behind that. Because you know, it's it's just an interesting dynamic of spiritualism um, that I've had friends talk about. And they've perceived spirits, you know, they've had full on visual. Like Absolutely. Yeah. And it's so dope. Absolutely. Is, you know, and um so that that is a possibility um, that you know, and and this is done in a ceremonial setting where we call in um, healers and ancestors and energies and light and love into the space, um, and for each individual, their ancestral line and 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 their healers um may look different in their journey that's so dope yeah that, that honestly because there's <laughs> there's personal but just experience, so we're yeah. clear just so we're clear like you can also go into a space and start to see your dead friends that's true so like I'm not, and, and, and that's, and that's why I answer that question the way I did, you know, because what I don't want is to like, for someone to think that they're going to meet, you know, a spiritual entity that's going to heal them from their crown to their, you know, bottom of their feet. And then all of a sudden they're walking with their buddy that died in 2005 in Afghanistan and their buddy's trying to talk to him and like that isn't uncommon either now is that something that because to me right and this is the uninitiated i would perceive that as equally as a positive that may be perceived as triggering or negative right is that well, how it goes or it's a positive if the person is ready if it's a positive, if the person is prepared mentally for that to happen, you know, um, See, that's so important. Where, yeah. I, I, I have seen it where 
individuals, they, they no longer want to lay down blindfolded, you know, and then they, they just sit up in the medicine and like, they're in this kind of purgatory in their journey. Um, but that's the medicine too, you know, like that's, it's their journey. It's their experience. It's, it's my, you know, role as a facilitator to provide safety during that experience. That's so important. And that, and that includes physical safety, emotional support, you know, things like that. That's beautiful, dude. I, I honestly, I'm so fucking like, just I'm, I'm, I can't even find the fucking words, right? I'm stoked about it because I know we're going to eventually do some shit. <laughs> I mean, as, as, unprofessional as that sounds i mean it in the in the best of ways the work necessary no, and I, I agree yeah like i was telling who was i telling to i think i was talking to my mom honestly and yeah it was my mom and so her and i have had these conversations you know like about therapy like you brought up pills and stuff you know side effects of medications and my motivation towards discovering new aspects not only of life Right, you know, living philosophy, psychology, you know, re rearing up my my kin, right, raising my children and shit, you know, better ways and better days is what I have on my fucking vision board, right? Better ways, better days, okay. And so on that, of course, it's applied, you know, therapies daily, and that's also another thing I use just to kind of get my brain fucking into the day before I. Before I slip back, you know what I mean? Because everybody has their, you know, the, the progress met with adversity. And I think that's such a valuable aspect is to have a check-in, right? Have a community, have a support system, put those anchoring points up, you know, dive into these medicines that make you go some places you may not want, but you may need. And to have that, to have that actual support system in person, like you being a leader in it, you know, uh, it's, it's really fucking awesome, dude. It's, I'm just stoked. Thanks, dude. Um, it feels very aligned. It, it, it feels like I'm doing, going down the right road, you know? Well, I noticed that, you know, like us talking from last time to this time, right? You've increased your, your outlook, you know, creating that space, right. And developing, you know, the church. But also uh, the animals. I fucking love the animals. They're so awesome. And oh, yeah. We didn't get a chance to talk since I got these new cows. Yeah. And so I want to update our listeners. How many more animals you got now? I just got three more cows. That's it. It feels like a lot more. But I got three cows. I got two pregnant heifers and um, a six-month-old bull. Oh, wow. So we have a total of five cows and one horse and two dogs and um those heifers should be dropping those calves in june so Dude, that is so tight so that's right that's right right around the corner yeah i know i know it's really right around the corner and uh so like we went and got um <laughs> we, this is a funny story so we went and got like the cow squeeze and we got the big heavy cattle panels for the little pen. And like, we're going to figure out, you know, a way to like get them in there and do what we need to do as far as deworm them and give them their shots and whatever. So we go and we buy all this shit. And, um, I'm thinking like they're going to show up and like be able to put it off of the truck and like no problem. And, and so I talked to the guy this morning and he's like, yeah, I should be at your place around 11. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, it just, so I'm clear, do I need the equipment to take this um, cow squeeze off of the truck? He's like, yeah, you're going to need a pretty big skid steer. And oh I was like, God. okay. I was like, um, I don't have one and I'm going to have to find one. So I'm, I was like, look, it's not going to happen today. Cause I had a bunch of other stuff that I had to do, but I tried to find one and I couldn't, but yeah, so we're all in with the uh, cow situation, and um, now what is a I'm cow a, squeeze then? What is it? Yeah, I've never heard of a cow squeeze. Well, like a cow, a cattle shoot, and then a cow squeeze. So the cow squeeze is like 
um, you w- walk them down a little alley and then they get to like this apparatus, a fairly large, heavy apparatus that they stick their head in and then like it slowly like squeezes them to where they can't move. Oh, wow. Um, and that's necessary that's like, for like veterinary and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, we have a couple cows that you can milk. So like you can put them in there and like milk them. You can, you know, pet them and <laughs> you can hold them there and pet them. But like you can brush them like for our Highland cows, it's going to give us the opportunity to brush them and which will be great because they could use it, especially after my calf fell in a, a septic tank. Oh, my um, God, dude. No way. Yeah, that was a while ago, but um, that was a whole nother story. But that was yeah, so. Hilarious. It was not hilarious. It was the worst, but it was also a good experience. Well, um, you know, as an observer, right, I, w- I would not want to be the guy doing the work. I'm just being very honest. <laughs> yeah, it was a, uh, it was it was a wild night. It's but, a literal shit show. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, so like, um, we're we're talking about eventually getting some. You know, she possibly, I like to eat lamb. Um, so I would like to get some sheep. I'd, I'd like to get some kind of birds too. You got chickens, yeah? No, no, that's the thing we're working towards is our, ah, that's our right. animal. You yeah. were, you were wanting to get some chickens. I really do. I want to get some chickens. Um, the other day <laughs> we found some uh, turkeys at the shop down the road. And uh, me and my grandpa were walking around looking at turkeys and chickens and rabbits and i was like bro like i really just genuinely want that but i know with all the other things right now with the kids and you know all the things with the show i it would be a me 100 percent thing <laughs> and my wife was like yeah you know maybe we start slower like maybe you get uh you start feeding the dogs every day <laughs> i'm like okay sounds good because we have three dogs and uh, my sister's dog right now and four cats. My mom has four cats. And my sister just found like a, a pocket full of mice in her room. Uh, and I was like, cool. Now we also have five baby mice. <laughs> the, farm, the farm's going off great. And uh, <laughs> But that's about it. Like I would genuinely love to invest, uh, you know, in that and, and have be a part of that or something one day. Uh, I found out you can have a service miniature horse or miniature donkey i'm not sure if it's one or both and uh i don't know who does that but you can get those i was like dude that would be dope as far as farming farming like meat animals man i would love lamb that'd be delicious me too dude like and the thing is i don't have anything to keep them safe like i would need like a dog outside or a donkey or you know yeah that's um, true huh? some, some, yeah because those sheep can't fight <laughs> like the cows got horns they're like get out of here dog yeah. but the the sheep are like please don't rip me apart <laughs> that bleeds i don't even know what kind of like a lot of americans right no that's so true though like i think we've ground off our own teeth to the point where we're gumming shit to death and you know honestly the whole Leading the sheep to slaughter, or lamb to slaughter is a great expression. But lamb is tasty. I'm not gonna lie. Lamb shawarma is like one of my favorite <laughs> fucking meals. I can't lie. You know, out of all the meat that the human body digests, the easiest lamb is number one. Really? To include like white fish or like anything like that, lamb. That's such a weird. That's awesome. I mean, not, I mean, think about it. There were like a whole bunch of lamb in the Bible, so like they were, they've been around for a bit. That's fucking true shit. You know, it's weird we, until you say shit out loud like that. Then that makes more sense. Yeah, that's funny. See, I would, I would grow the shit out of lamb. My wife would be like, "Don't you dare!" I'm like, "Okay, don't look." <laughs> but I, but I'm about to put it in the skillet. What you talking about? <laughs> it's about to be delicious. Not only cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well alrighty then man let's wrap it up here uh, I'm so grateful for your time and uh, even though I fucked up on the days I'm just I'm just thankful for your graciousness and uh, booking it out for today 
uh thank you for your time thank you for the information one last time if you'd like to plug the your your the way we can get contact with you but also the event that's going on, on memorial day yeah if i could plug a couple things go I'd ahead like man to. plug away um, no if um if any veteran um just wants support and help uh you can reach out to me if like you're not interested in psychedelics and and you just want a a person to kind of meet you where you are um i also do that you know um i'm really proud of the team that i've developed around me to help people you know if it's not just me then i i have people on my team that are just talented just talented women talented men that are brilliant in what they do um so reach out to me at any time j-e-r-o-d underscore n-a-p-i-e-r just my first name underscore last name um and then if there are any outdoorsmen that listen to this podcast which i know there are there's an organization called casting freedom um that my buddy ron potter stood up and it is an amazing organization doing amazing things. They are not connected to what I do um, on the uh, with the retreats at all. I just really wanted to give them a hard plug because they're they're good people doing great things, and they've you know um, taken me out on a fishing trip with a couple bass pros, and they you know line veterans up and Gold Star family members up with fishing tackle fishing rods um you know experiences to go out on the water with bass pros and um they're sponsored by lose uh, strike king uh beautiful people and i'm the um i'm the uh, operational director for them so i'd like to plug that beautiful organization as well awesome and so how do we get a hold of them is it was it casting? At casting freedom. Yeah. At casting freedom. Awesome, dude. That is awesome. I love one of the one of the actually best trips that I've been on was in Colorado uh, with a veteran organization. I can't remember the name of them. And uh, we we were going rainbow trout fly fishing, and so we were going on these river rafts, little like 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 little like blow up rafts, right? And I caught eleven fish. The dude was like, that's the most fish I've ever seen anybody catch. And I did not know how to fucking throw the reel at the beginning of the day. Like, he goes, have you ever did fly fishing? I'm like, no. He goes, all right, this is what you do. I'm like, okay. He goes, flick it back and forth. Flick it back and forth. I'm like, okay. All right. Okay. He goes, now you see those bubbles? I'm like, "Uh uh-huh. He goes, flick it towards the bubbles. I'm like, okay. I flick it right to the bubble. Bro, fish every fucking time. His face was like, no goddamn way. Like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just following instructions like a good boy. All right. But no, it's so much fun to get out there, get on the water. And, you know, if you catch some big ass bass, uh, that that's even better. Do you actually get to eat the fish? I know, I don't remember. As things change so much that if you catch a bass, can you eat it or is it you have to give it back? Man, I I'm from Florida. We we throw it in the skillet if we need to. Um, you know, but typically bass fishing is catch and release but um depending on where you're from and how hungry you are like that's your fish you can do what you want with it <laughs> right i'm uh, from florida we eat largemouth bass where i'm from because that's how i grew up see I, would, I love fish i love eating any kind of fish and that's something where you know I, I went deep sea fishing with my dad when i was very young um and it was so cool but one of the fish i would love to go catch is a tuna and i just want to eat the shit out of that thing raw like straight out of the sea, put it on some ice for like 15, 25, 35 minutes, and then roam. Dude, I'd be so down yeah, for dude. that. I, I love tuna. That's so cool. I love fish. Fishy fish. Thank you, fish, for your fish. <laughs> All right, then, man. Thank you so much for your time. And we're going to go ahead and close out. And it is. Yeah,